Why do WNBA players seem to have it out for Caitlin Clark? From the moment she stepped onto the professional courts, the Indiana Fever Guard has found herself in the crosshairs of WNBA veterans. The escalating number and severity of fouls against her have sparked outrage among fans and analysts alike. So what's behind these aggressive tactics? Stay tuned till the end of this video because we've got all the juicy details and insights you need to understand this heated rivalry. Let's get into it. Rivalries are the lifeblood of sports. Think Magic vs. Bird, Ali vs. Frazier, Brady vs. Manning. So, what's better for the WNBA than Caitlin Clark having one rival? Well, how about Caitlin Clark having 200 rivals? This year, the WNBA is experiencing unprecedented attention, and it's all thanks to the arrival of Caitlin Clark. Her national championship loss against South Carolina drew nearly 19 million viewers, making it the most watched women's sporting event in history. While the league hasn't quite hit those numbers yet, Clark is still drawing over a million fans per game to their TV screens, something the WNBA hadn't seen in over a decade before the Indiana Fever drafted her. But it's not because Clark is dominating on the court like she did at Iowa. As the highest scoring player in NCAA basketball history, men or women, Clark averaged over 28 points per game in college, with an astonishing 31.6 points in her final season. However, in her first 10 WNBA games, her highest scoring game is 30 points, which, although impressive, she's only averaging under 17 points per game. This isn't a surprise. Most rookies face challenges when transitioning from college or high school to the professional ranks. The game is faster and their opponents are stronger. Caitlin Clark is certainly feeling that pressure, but I think it's safe to say that she will figure it out eventually. Until then, fans need more reasons to tune in. Clark's college dominance, especially her incredible long-range three-point shots, was a major draw for fans. She led Iowa to the national championship game, ending the season with a 34-5 record. But the Indiana Fever? They're struggling. With a 2-8 record, they have the second worst win percentage in the WNBA. In a league where the top 8 out of 12 teams make the playoffs, the Fever are currently 3 spots out of contention. Since Clark's debut game, it seems like some seasoned WNBA players have made it their mission to put the rookie in her place. The fouls against her have been piling up with referees appearing to turn a blind eye. The latest incident involved Kennedy Carter delivering a brutal shoulder blow during the Fever's 71-70 win over the Chicago Sky. This hit sparked a wave of outrage from fans, coaches, and journalists alike. Austin Rivers, in a post on X, formerly Twitter, called out the jealousy and hostility, tweeting, We gotta stop the cap and all the hate some of y'all women are putting on Caitlyn. Let's be honest about why there's so much interest in women's basketball all of a sudden. The Caitlyn Clark effect. It's not only because of her, but it is mainly because of her. Cut the jealousy, please. And it's easy to identify the cause of the envy that surrounds Caitlyn Clark's WNBA success, her indisputable talent. Even though Clark may be having trouble on the court right now, she has an unmatched ability to draw attention and admirers. Despite only having the 16th highest points per game, she continues to command attention. Clark's reputation as a trash talker, which she developed while attending Iowa and continued into the WNBA, provides fuel to the flames. Some players have become irritated by this, which has led to a simmering conflict that erupted recently over Kennedy Carter. Before Carter's controversial hit on Clark, there was an exchange between the two players, suggesting tensions were already simmering. While Clark's actions may not have warranted such a response, it's hard to deny that her presence may have heightened the intensity of the altercation. Despite the negative attention surrounding the incident, it's undeniably driving interest in the WNBA. The clip of Carter's hit is circulating widely on social media, and every sports outlet is covering it, myself included. Despite not being directly involved in the controversy, Angel Reese has injected herself into the middle of it. Reese believes Chicago has been wrongly portrayed as the antagonist, while Caitlin Clark and The Fever have been portrayed as the heroes. Reese recently spoke out, pointing out another instance in the game where she was hit similarly and claimed there was a double standard at play. She said this, Did you see when JJ knocked me down? Go check the film. JJ knocked me down, but she only got a regular foul, not a flagrant one. It was the same thing. You can't pick and choose who gets flagrant fouls. The Sky left Indiana with a narrow loss and a chorus of boos from the fans. Reese, a rookie out of LSU, contributed 8 points and 13 rebounds, while Clark notched 11 points and 8 rebounds. Despite their 3-4 and four season under first-year head coach Taria Weatherspoon, Chicago has forged a tight-knit squad. And this incident has only strengthened their bond, especially with viral footage showing Reese standing up for Carter. The truth is, controversy and drama often steal the spotlight in sports. And 
and the incident involving Caitlin Clark and Kennedy Carter is a prime example. Had the Indiana Fever simply defeated the Chicago Sky without any controversy, the game likely wouldn't have garnered nearly as much attention. In fact, Clark's first 10 games in the WNBA proven that it's the games with controversy that receive the most coverage. It's a simple equation. Controversy sells. Rivalries sell. And unfortunately, the drama surrounding WNBA players' attitudes towards Clark also sells. But let's not pretend that this is anything new to the WNBA. Rookies often face tough treatment from veterans, as evidenced by Angel Reese's recent experience of being grabbed by the throat and thrown to the ground. It's a harsh reality of professional sports. The veterans make it clear that it's their court. However, the hate keeps getting worse for Caitlin Clark. Clark's entry into the WNBA comes with a splash, already boasting collaborations with powerhouse brands like Gatorade, State Farm, Buick, Bose, and more. According to USA Today, she joins an elite club of only three other WNBA players with shoe deals, Brianna Stewart with Puma, and Elena De La Dunn and Sabrina Ionescu with Nike. Fun fact, Ionescu's initial deal in 2020 reportedly clocked in at a staggering $24 million, as as reported by the outlet. According to Sham Sharania of The Athletic, the WNBA star is close to sealing a monumental deal with Nike worth over $28 million, which includes her signature shoe. Clark is not only one of the most incredible basketball players on the planet, but also one of the most popular. Before news of Clark's Nike deal broke, her WNBA contract with the Indiana Fever went viral. Set to earn $338,000 over four years, many were shocked at the low figure for such a talent. On FanDuel's Run It Back show, former Memphis Grizzlies forward Chandler Parsons defended Clark against the critics. He said this, All these people making fun of Caitlin Clark's WNBA salary. Eat shit, because she's making more money than you, so keep hating. I hope this is just the beginning of these girls getting their massive deals. So why is there such an outcry about these incidents being bad for the WNBA? The truth is, they're not. They're drawing attention to the league, sparking conversations, and bringing in new fans, something that can only benefit the WNBA. NBA in the long run. Just take a look back at the social media frenzy surrounding Clark. Type her name into the search bar on X, and you'll see everyone buzzing about the recent hit incident. But how many people are discussing Clark's actual performance or the game's final score? It's true that those details might be harder to find amidst the noise. Some might argue that this focus on extracurricular drama is detrimental to the league, overshadowing the game itself. But is it? For years, the WNBA struggled to capture the attention of fans. Now, thanks to players like Caitlin Clark, people are tuning in and taking notice. In the end, what matters most is that the WNBA is becoming a topic of conversation, drawing in new fans, and redefining its place in the sports landscape. So while the drama surrounding Clark may dominate headlines now, it's ultimately shining a spotlight on the league, a long overdue spotlight. But what do you think? Do you believe the tension surrounding Caitlin Clark is good for the WNBA? Or do you think it detracts from the true essence of the sport? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below and let me know. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content just like this, don't forget to give us a like, share it with your friends, and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with everything NBA Swish. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.